So with me today is Richard Pyle, Dr. Richard Pyle. Richard's been a GP in St. Albans for uh, more, than, more than 20 years. Has got a depth of experience of medicine and well-being and has just recently published this wonderful book called Fit for Purpose, which has a superb subheading of your guide to better health, well-being and living a meaningful life. Richard, well, how did you get the time to write this, but also why did you write this, this book? <laughs> well, thank you, Peter, for your very kind intro. Um, I just thought with the subtitle that I didn't want to bite off more than I could chew, so I just put all of that in, you know, health, well-being and a meaningful life in, in one book. Um, I, I think the answer to that is that actually the, the lead-ups, the, there have been quite a few years lead up to it because of the way that I was thinking about how I did life in terms of personally and professionally, how I practice as a doctor, but also how I lived it and how that worked with my faith as well. Um, and then I guess the events of the last sort of year or two obviously made me think more deeply about that. Uh, and I know it's a bit of a cliche, but people people joked about, you know, what, what are you going to do in lockdown? Are you going to write a book or build a Taj Mahal out of matchsticks? And I'm a cliche because I did actually write a book, although I had I had been writing it for about six months before uh, that all kicked off. In the book, you you talk about mental health, you talk about physical health, but you also talk about spiritual health, the spiritual dimension of life. How important do you see that as as being and that's something that i've come to think a lot more about over the last few years peter and i think really it's it's vital um we've learned in medicine mostly not to divide the the physical and the and the mental um when, when we do try to put those in separate boxes it doesn't tend to end very well and one inevitably is connected to the other and then really, I think it's the same as uh, for the spiritual as well. I think you can look at it from two perspectives. I think in the secular world, we risk not fulfilling our potential as humans if we don't acknowledge the importance for us of, of spirituality, whatever that means, and we can get onto that. But I think also flipping it around in, in the more spiritual world, uh, and by that I mean perhaps say in faith communities, for example, like, like the, the church, um, we also risk limiting our potential if we don't acknowledge our humanity as well as our spirituality and, and so I, it's this danger of duality that I talk about in the book and I've seen it cause problems at, from at both ends as it were. Let's look at it from both ends then so within the church for example in churches should should we and I'm, I'm an ordained person I'm, I'm a priest should I be preaching more and should we be teaching more about about well-being in, in the broadest sense? Absolutely, because I, I believe it is all interconnected. And I think if we <clears throat> if we just talk about what we might call the spiritual, I think that's the risk is that that's really in a vacuum, in isolation. The, 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 you, you've heard the quote, I'm sure, about being too heavenly minded to be of any earthly use. And um, because we are human beings and we have the spiritual aspect and the physical aspect, it's great to hear on Sunday about, you know, hear someone preach really well, to, you know, talk about a passage of scriptures, you know, describe something that you've never thought of before or challenge you about. And that's really good. But that's just one aspect of your life. And I believe to live a truly fulfilling, satisfying and enjoyable life. You need to be thinking about all aspects. And sometimes I've got the impression over the years that people are quite prepared to sacrifice themselves physically in the pursuit of the spiritual uh, and I, I believe that to be wrong I think we have to consider all of those things so in answer to your question yes I think that we should be talking about well-being and it should be being preached from the pulpit and other places as well. And, and to flip it around the other way you, you were saying that the the secular world say the secular medical world perhaps mm. doesn't see the spiritual so mm. could, could you see a, po a point where I don't know somebody would go and see their doctor, their GP, and the GP would say, well, actually, I think you could be a lot healthier if you started going to church. It's, it's a very interesting question, isn't it? I don't necessarily imagine the conversation taking place literally as, as bluntly and succinctly as that, but I appreciate it. it was, you were using it as an example. I think that if we really want to do our best as doctors, 
and consider people's well-being and look at them in the round holistically to use an overused word but a good word I think that aspect needs to be explored and that doesn't depend upon a doctor necessarily considering themselves to be a spiritual person themselves or even signing up to any particular brand of faith um, but I think if you're going to think about someone's sleep and their movement and their nutrition and their relationships and their levels of stress and their relaxation meaning and purpose in life and there is increasing there are increasing bodies of evidence out there to show how you can demonstrate that it is really important for health to have purpose in life and that that faith and belief in specific faiths can be valuable as well if that's truly a part of life then as doctors we'd have to ask ourselves why we weren't at least asking that question so I might not send someone with a prescription, you know, one sermon four times a day, but uh, I do think we should at least be asking some questions so that people are open to that and starting to think about it. So in, in, in the book, which, as I say, I, I, I think is marvellous. I've really enjoyed the book. If, uh, if only I could take all, all your advice, I'd be a whole lot fitter in all, all sorts of ways. But you make no secret about you're your, your, your a Christian. You talk about your faith. Uh, mm. In each section, you 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 have an area where you talk about what the Bible says about this particular thing, whether it's sleep or or diet or or, or, or connectivity. So, mm. coming to this book as as a Christian, do you think there's a particular particular I don't know Christian way of looking at well-being that we could all gain from? Um, yes, yes, I think so. I think first of all having any belief system, any value system, any spirituality in your life of whatever kind gives you a different dimension, a different lens that you look through life at. And I would say that Christianity is obviously one of those lenses that you can look at it through. Uh, and I think going back to your mention of the bits I put at the end of each chapter about the, the Bible's teaching, there is lots in the Bible about that, that talks about things like um, how we look after our bodies and how we connect with other people and how we can manage our mental health and our levels of stress and, uh, and and how we think about what our purpose and our meaning in life is and so I think that Christianity definitely has uh, a lot to say about that I'm not saying it's the only way of looking at it but I certainly based on my limited experience of life and my knowledge of, of the Christian faith I think it's um it's it there's a lot that you can learn from Christian teaching Richard, we, we could talk about this subject for a, a very long time, but I, I think I just want to say um, here's the book available through all good booksellers, particularly when when they're open and uh, well worth getting hold of a copy of. So, Richard, thanks very much for speaking to me today. Thank you very much, Peter.